The last time the Royals celebrated the postseason on the field, they were champions of the world. Where will 2014 lead the Royals? We don't know. What we do know is that with a win tonight, the Royals will celebrate a trip back to the playoffs. And you'll see it here on Fox Sports Kansas City. Baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. It is a beautiful night in Chicago, a good night for a celebration as the Royals continue their four game series with the Chicago White Sox. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark with Rex Hudler. I'm Ryan Lefevre. Joel Goldberg is coming up in a moment. We're going to do a little bit of scoreboard watching, but as far as the Royals are concerned, they can get to the playoffs tonight without doing any scoreboard watching. Oh, and that's exactly what you want to do. You want on your own terms, you want that win and then to celebrate. I think it's a good scenario. I can't wait for it to happen. And plan A, of course, is for the Royals to win the division. They still have a chance to do that. And there is good news in Detroit. First of all, as it stands today, the Royals and A's would play the wild card. It would be at Coffin Stadium with the winner going on to play the Angels. And that series would begin on the West Coast. So the Royals can take care of that tonight. They still have their sights set on winning the division. The Royals are two games back of the Tigers. And in our Mazda game break for tonight, this is Oswaldo Arcia hitting a two-run home run off of Rick Porcello. And in the fourth inning, Minnesota leads the Tigers 4-0. Yes, and it's important that the Royals don't lose sight of the Central. It still can happen. Anything can happen in this game. You just never know, but they're going to keep winning. But one thing's for certain. These guys want to win this game tonight. It's important that they get a run, get some runs early for Guthrie so he can relax and then celebrate. Well, the key advancing in the postseason is not necessarily who has the best record, but who is playing the best going into the postseason. And the Royals have some hot hitters that hope to support Jeremy Guthrie, who has won six games against the Chicago White Sox since becoming a Royal.
Our AT&T U-verse Rewind. The Royals, nine runs and 16 hits here in Chicago. They pummeled the White Sox and Hector Noesi, tonight's starting pitcher, three and two thirds, eight hits and five runs. The boys in blue would love a repeat of that here tonight at U.S. Cellular Field. Welcome back to the south side of Chicago. Joel Goldberg down right by the Royals dugout. There is an incredible energy down here with the players and the fans. The players, they know the map. They know it's at stake. A chance to get in the postseason for the first time in 29 years. And while that would be huge for them, they know even bigger for those who have suffered through all the losing years. I think it means more to the fan base than it does to us just because, you know, they're the people that have had to deal with this for the last, you know, how many years. And um, you can really see the excitement out here in Chicago, all the fans, and especially after last night's game, there's the energy of uh, everyone cheering us on. Jeremy Guthrie is on the hill, and as one Royals fan just said, I've been waiting my whole life for this. First pitch is next. A today by the Missouri Lottery. Try the new Lucky Sevens playbook. And by ATT Uverse. Find out what's possible with ATT. Call 1 800 Pick ATT. Mobilizing your world. The impressive and beautiful skyline of Chicago, Illinois. Royals two games back of the Tigers. Again, the Tigers are losing at home 4 0 to Minnesota. And the Royals have the one game advantage in the wild card to win tonight and the Royals are back in the postseason. It's also important they don't give up the, that central thoughts because that could easily happen here. They just stay hot and run the rest of the way this week. You never know what can happen. The Royals lineup tonight presented by your Midwest Ford dealers. And Ned Yost is going with the same lineup that came up with six runs on 14 hits. And a come from behind victory last night over the White Sox 6 3. And tonight the Royals face 27 year old right hander Hector Noesi for the second time this year. Oh man, yeah. Allowed home runs and seven straight starts. Keep it up. He's given up 28 home runs at second most in baseball. So lefties and righties belly up to that plate and look for something up. He might give it to you. We have Nieto. 
Adrian Nieto highlighted on the Sox defense. He's a young catcher. He'll be a challenge. Escobar taking a big hack for a swing. Trying to win the game with the first <laughs> swing. He was. The Royals have a 321 average in Noaces two starts versus Kansas City. So they've had no problem hitting him. We would hope that would continue. Look at that. Base hit left field, and Escobar has a seven game hitting streak. There's Ted Barrett, the crew chief. He is at second base tonight with Rob Drake behind the plate. Alfonso Marquez at first. Chris Conroy is at third. Escobar doing his job. Getting on base. He's hit 356 in that leadoff hole in 14 games. Getting the job done for Ned. And Aoki is showing bunt and takes a little bit high. Get those infielders moving. Canerco was coming in. Third baseman Gillespie was coming in. The in middle infielders were moving. That's good. Move them out of position now. See if he can put a good slash on. Eighteen runs allowed in the first inning by Noacy, giving him an ERA of over six in the inning this year. Get some early runs for Guthrie. Field line that is a fair ball and all the way down to the wall. <laughs> Escobar's around third. Aoki is on his way to third, and in a flash, the Royals have a one nothing lead. Sixth triple on the year. Aoki uh, Doki early. He pulled it. Did something up. There you go. <laughs> Trying to figure it out. But Aoki did. He figured it out. That ball was right down the middle. He turned on it with a nice short quick swing. And Escobar, he's off to the races. So a track meet's already broken out for his two hitters. Take that pressure off of Guthrie and get as many as you can. Side to Lorenzo Kane. Kane had a four hit game last night, which included two doubles and an RBI. He has driven in 13 this year against the White Sox. And he has a seven game hitting streak. Line to center field, base hit. And three batters into it, and the Royals have a 2 0 lead. Wow. It's important. But the Kansas City Royals score first. They're 61 and 21 when they score first. These guys, Hosmer and Kane, have been really driving that bus for the Royals. They are stepping up and finishing strong. That's what you look for. That ball last night. I think that's one of his best at bats of the year. Off a left hander. Ball was down. He reached out, short and compact. Got the job done. Lorenzo Kane, man, has he been automatic? That's over center fielder's head. And a pair of seven game hitting streaks into these two combined. Scalding hot. Infield hits, line drives, doesn't matter. They're attacking, they're aggressive, showing their game. Osmer going for it all and a bit off balance on one. I haven't really even had a chance to tell you what Noacy throws. Got a fastball slider curve and a change up. He'll average about 92 miles an hour on that fastball. Been throwing some more change ups in his last couple starts. So far tonight, he throws singles and triples. One ball, one strike. Mainly fastballs, but it really doesn't matter. They're looking up in the zone and they're not missing early. Their fangs are out. Down in front. One ball, 
two strikes. It's important that he pitches inside too. He, he does that against lefties. So come in against lefties, not so much to righties, but it sets up that changeup that he's got Osborne to swing at two times in a row. It's about all of his move. He's, he's got an average move, but he's a good athlete. He fields his position pretty well. The opponents have stolen six out of eight bases. When he's pitched, so you can steal off. Keen is flinching over there. He wants to go, and Hosmer takes low. Two balls, two strikes. Adrian Nieto, the catcher. He's a little jumpy back there. He's bouncing. He's coming out. You know, and that's what he does. That's what it does. It puts the catcher on edge, and it puts the rest of the infielders on edge. Especially when the Royals get out there on the bases. The great formula Ned has. When you don't hit home runs, you score them with running them bases, attacking, being aggressive. Nieto is trying to come up with a game plan to get his former high school teammate out, Osmer and Nieto. Played together in Miami. And that's tap foul. Still two and two. It is now six nothing Minnesota over Detroit in the top of the fourth inning. The twins are knocking around Rick Porcello, who's been the Tigers' most consistent starting pitcher this year. And with the devices today, fans here in Chicago can keep tabs on that game. Also, what will be happening with Oakland and Texas, and with Seattle and the Angels. Another foul ball by Hosmer. Hosmer getting his money's worth in this at bat. Anywhere from seven to ten pitches you see first time through, that's really good. That'll set you up for more success in your second and third time through if he stays in that long. Top four hitters in the Royals lineup tonight. And with what they've done in this inning, Escobar has a seven game hitting streak. Aoki has a six game hitting streak. Kane has an eight game hitting streak. And Hosmer has a seven game hitting streak. Kane runs, and Hosmer strikes out. Nieto's throw is high. Lorenzo Kane adds to his career high with his 28 stolen base. Yep, two more, and he gets there with Escobar and Dyson for over 30 stolen bases. Good jump. I know he wears number six and Billy Wilson's old number, but. I think they're they're very similar as far as their running style goes. They're both big guys, you know. But when it comes to tracking balls in the outfield, I think that Willie would be proud of Lorenzo Kane's work out there this year. The way he's been able to get the balls. Billy was 0 for 4 last night, but he drove in a run. Giving him nine this year against the White Sox. Two balls and no strikes. Last 
seven games, Billy's been hit, heating up, getting an opportunity to play. Ned's getting him in there. He's hitting 320, six RBIs. One for two in his career off of Noisy. Well, he's had some of his best individual seasons against one team versus Chicago. Back in 2011, he had 16 RBIs against the White Sox. That was one shy of the team record. Time for liftoff. Oh, speed, and it's 3 1. I thought he might be swinging 3 1. And so did the battery mates. They do a change. Escobar, Ioki, and Keane were all over his fastball. They let him know early. That's for sure. I'm not done. Just one out. Time to get some more. Rounded up the middle and into center field. Keane rounds third. Eaton's throw is cut off. The fourth time this year, the Royals have scored at least three runs in the first inning against the White Sox. And that's 10 RBIs this season for Billy Butler against Chicago. Like that at bat. They're seeing a lot of pitches. They're, they're being selective up there in this first inning. Good example. 3 0 count goes to 3 and 2. Billy Waits, he knew he had to come in there. And he was ready for it. Right back where it came from. Lorenzo Kane got one up the middle, and so did Billy. That, that's, that's the best hit you can get outside of a big one. In my opinion, it's a good feel for hitters. They're right on the ball. Connie Cooper, in his 12th full season as a pitching coach for the White Sox, has seen this before. Anyways. Not aware of that award, but hey, if you have the most valuable anything, you'll take it. Jump on him early. That's what they're doing. Alex just one for three. The, the most at bats anybody in Ned's lineup has had off of Noisy has been just three at bats. Moose is three for three. He's down in the nine hole. Inside, going two. Three pitch strikeout. Lacey has two outs in the inning, both with strikeouts, and Butler's at first base with two down. Salvador Perez had two hits last night, including a triple his second of the year, and scored a run. And tonight, starting at catcher, he ties the Royals' record for starts at that position in a single season. Daryl Porter had done it twice 141 games. Jordan Danks in right field makes the play, and on this Important night for the Royals. They come out swinging and they come out scoring. Frenzy hit in the first inning. You gotta like that, Jeremy Guthrie.
years ago, Jeremy Guthrie was having one of the worst seasons of his career, pitching with the Colorado Rockies. He put his career back together after joining the Royals, and the first team he beat as a member of the Royals was the Chicago White Sox. And Guthrie has gone six and three against Chicago since joining the Royals with a 2.67 ERA and pitching against them tonight. A win. And he helps the Royals back into the playoffs. Look how he's kept the ball in the yard since the All Star break. That's been impressive. And of course, fastball command for Jeremy Guthrie and most pitchers is important. He's going to work that two seam fastball, gets a little bit of run on it. He's going to cut his fastball. And a curve and a change. And what Jeremy Guthrie has done so well, keeping that ball in the ballpark, is he's pitching inside. He's knocking hitters off the plate. They're not comfortable against him. Dave Island likes that. And also, I think Jeremy Guthrie will tell you that Dave Island's been instrumental since that terrible season he started out with in Colorado. The three years he's been here. Dave Island. Oh, here they are. Check it out from last night. Well, we were just trying to help out. That's all. Good job, Gavin. Okay. Which he was going to do eventually. I'm sure he was going to get tired. Aiden, that might have been a stretch. I get the feeling that uh, the biggest challenge was Peyton. But Peyton did hang up the phone. Good job. Right to Alexei Ramirez, who bats second in the White Sox lineup. Michael Taylor plays in left field. Adrian Nieto is catching, and Paul Canerco is at first base. The changes from last night's game is Paul Canerco tonight. Running down that great career, will be playing his last three major league games against the Royals. Hosmer out. And Hosmer on the line makes a play. It's a foul ball catch, two down. Defensively, Kansas City Royals, we're going to highlight Escobar. Why not? This guy's an Iron Man. He could play all 162 games. Last guy to do that was Jimmy Rollins back in 07. A couple yep. of Iron Men right there. Academy Sports and Outdoors shows us that we have one player tying a record and one player setting a new record tonight. Cetus Escobar with his 160th game at shortstop that passes on Hel Baroa from nine years ago. And as I mentioned earlier, Salvador Perez has tied the team record. Daryl Porter started 141 games twice. That's about all that Jose Abreu has done against the Royals this year singles. Almost all the time with nobody on base, and he's on with two down. And yeah, they've been able to pitch to him extremely tough. Now that ball is out over the middle. He's not going to miss that. Thankfully, he didn't hit Guthrie. And we talked about it a few times since we've been playing the White Sox about how this is his first full major league season. And we used to play in about 90 something games in Cuba, so he's a rookie this year. And he's been He's been a little bit tired, but he's learning what it's all about. Connor Gillespie, the former Wichita State Shocker, who is from Omaha, is having the best season of his major league career, and he might be tiring a bit as well. Two for his last 19. See how he reaches down, puts a little dirt in his hand. That kind of takes away the stick from that stick of Just found both ball and bat going up the first baseline.
Hit that ball off the end of his bat. Don't forget to tweet your photo using hashtag KC fan photo for a chance to have it shown during tonight's game broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. Gillespie go to the on deck circle. And all he used was the pine tar. He didn't put any of that moda stick on him. So when you don't have batting gloves and you use that moda stick, it's real, it's a real gunky, uh, very sticky substance. And you see how he's going to the dirt. He likes to go in the dirt and make sure his hands are, are, are feeling good around that. Not too sticky. It's important. Now that's the moda stick. Here's the pine tar rag. There's the moda stick. Uh, so, you know, hitters have different ways. The rosin bags over here, that kind of uh, takes a little bit of that stickiness off as well. And it's important for hitters to have a, a grip on that bat, whether you use gloves or not. Did that young man get a baseball? He did. That's awesome. You can just tell by looking at him. He's excited. He's in right center field, and Kane runs it down to end the inning. Lorenzo Kane coming out of nowhere to take a hit and an RBI away from Connor Gillespie. <laughs> Willie Kane. Infante leads off the second inning after the Royals got three against Hector Noesi in the first inning. Aoki, Kane, and Butler driving in the runs. Infante was 0 for 4 last night. Strikeout and his second, which is three pitches. No Royals fans, as you're waiting for the excitement of the Royals' chase to the postseason tonight, don't miss out on any of the action next season. You can reserve your 2015 Royals season tickets and grab those must have seats. Watch the Royals next year. For more information on how to make a deposit, go to royals.com slash tickets.
2 0 on Moustakis. 1 for 4 last night. This has been one of the better teams for him this year. A 209 hitter overall, but 308 with three home runs against Chicago. And Wesse trying to pitch him inside, and it's 3 0. Obviously, trying to jam Moose. And the defense plays him that way. Been seeing that all year long. One with a four pitch walk, and that is Noasi's first. It's not many by Moose. Uh, I haven't seen a four straight pitch walk on him in a long time. That's his 35th walk on the season. On the second pitch of the game, Alcides Escobar single to left field. And then six pitches into the game, the Royals had two runs. So there were several fans who hadn't even found their seats yet. And the White Sox were down by two and then eventually three. That's what he's doing, getting ahead. He's using his fastball and he's finishing guys off with his curve. Now his curve is the least used pitch of the four that he uses but hitters are only hitting 250 on that pitch so he tries to get ahead with the fastball and he's been using that curveball to get the righties out anyway He is pitched with the Yankees, the Mariners, the Rangers, and then claimed off of waivers this year by the White Sox. Stockis runs, and the Royals are trying a hit and run, and it's one and two on Escobar. It's a good idea. Escobar likes to hit the ball to right field. A little bit tardy in the swing. Close, but down and away, two and two. Starting in his 160th game this year at shortstop. That is a new Royals record. And if he plays tomorrow and Sunday, it will be the first shortstop since Jimmy Rollins in 07 to play in all 162 games. Pretty impressive for such a demanding position. Shortstop, yeah, that, that is really tough. You have to be in great condition. But you most importantly have to have a, a good mind. You have to be smart. And Escobar is. He's a smart player. Takes care of himself. He just loves to play. He has everything a shortstop needs. He's got range. He's got a great arm. His footwork is impeccable. He's got great feet. And then you put the bat in his hand. He's having one of his better seasons this year. Good all around shortstop. Doesn't hit the power that some guys do, but it can be dangerous. And he gets another hit. The stock is stops at second. Escobar is two for two. Runner in scoring position for Nori Aoki as we look at our Toyota League leaders. Now, Aoki's job is to get on base and score runs, but since the All Star break, he's been driving in the runs. Only Hunter Pence and Buster Posey of the Giants have a better batting average with runners in scoring position than Nori Aoki. Nori's is the best in the American League. First inning with a 
triple down into the right field corner. Driving in Escobar and then he scored on Kane's single. First year in the American League. And so the second half has been better than the first half. And yet, when he went from Japan to the Brewers, he really didn't have a difficult adjustment right away in the National League as he has in his first year in the American League. He was pretty consistent in first and second halves, both in 2012 and 2013. Center field, and it's going to be caught. He brought some slice to it, and that helped out Taylor, who throws all the way to first. Escobar is back in time. Two down. And now Lorenzo Cain comes to the plate. He is our MTP of the game, the most trusted player, brought to you by the most trusted brand, Honda. Lorenzo Cain is hitting over 300. And he wants to do it for the first time in his career. And how he's doing it, he's keeping it simple. He's hitting the ball up the middle. Look at all these hits. Center field, chop knock, base hit tonight, line shot. Everything he's squaring up, he's trying to hit the ball right back to the pitcher. That's what he told me before the game. He said, I'm just keeping it simple. I'm not trying to do too much and try to pull him. I'm going after him. He can steal. Tremendous weapon. That was acquired. He was acquired along with Escobar. For the Zach and that Zach Grinky trade that Dayton Moore pulled off in 2010. You put the sign, the signing of Aoki up there, the top three hitters in Ned's lineup are all from Milwaukee. So is Ned. There you go. It's interesting how this team was built. A lot of patience. Will play it to second. Close, but out. Two more runners with a walk and a single. The Royals are scoreless and have a 3 0 lead to the bottom of the second. Erko comes to the plate. Royals fans, their ovation right now is for the Twins, six to one. Rick Porcello only lasted three and two thirds in this one. Also, some good news as Oakland is losing early. A Royals win 
and an A's loss tonight would guarantee at least the Royals hosting the wild card on a Tuesday. And as the fans greet the legend here on the south side, Paul Caderco, a Royals legend, is here. George Brett came at Dayton Moore's invitation. And he said, you know, I'm not going to go down there and celebrate with the guys. This is their moment. I didn't coach them this year. But the Royals making the playoffs, he said, means the world to me. And he said he really can sense the excitement. He says he's had friends in Kansas City for 40 years that never once asked him about baseball. And now they're texting him. Why'd they make that change? Why did they advance the runner? How great was that? So excited and into every single moment. And he said now, when he goes to walk his dogs, which he does every morning, he can't get through that walk. Everybody's stopping him, honking their horns, and excited about the Royals. Why shouldn't they be? It's an exciting baseball team. With the fact that they don't hit the ball out of the yard, and they run, and they gun, and they get hits, heck, it's, you know, it's a fun ball club to watch. And the way they pitch, oh my goodness. It's all coming together. Got three strikes out Canerco on just three pitches. And now gets Jordan Danks with one out. Guthrie's getting some lumber tonight. Front office, eight more in the middle. George Brett in front of him. Art Stewart is here. JJ Piccolo behind the window on the right. Nick Leto is in the back row. He runs the Royals spring training facility. And surprise Arizona, Renee Francisco is here. And those are just the people that we can show you on screen. As Dayton Moore wanted. As many people as possible. <laughs> Dayton. <laughs> George. I've never seen George flinch. Of course, he wasn't looking. That could be a scary thought. And when that ball is fouled off him, you you're not looking at it. And you jump and flinch. And now Danks is down on strikes. Guthrie has struck out the first two in the second inning. Give Guthrie a three run lead early and look at him go to work. Curveball in the outer half. Dinks off balance. He thought a fastball was coming. He pulled it and missed. Gotta wonder what they're thinking. There's not a lot of talking going on in that suite there. They're just sitting and waiting and watching. There's Emily Penning. Alex Zubal's in there too. He's their advanced scout. This will be a pretty good matchup here. Two Stanford guys. Guthrie and Michael Taylor. This guy's a big lad. 6'6, 255. It's more like a football player. Guthrie's first. White 
Sox catcher Adrian Nieto. Got on the lineup last night. Finishing his first major league season. He was a rule five pick from the Nationals. Switch hitter. High school teammates. Nick Castellanos, third baseman for the Tigers, also went to American Heritage High School in Miami. And Fonte to the hole. Nieto is out. And two scoreless innings for Jeremy Guthrie, pitching with a 3 0 lead. National League Cy Young Award last night, and overwhelmingly, and rightly so, you voted that Clayton Kershaw would win. Will he win the MVP, or will it be Andrew McCutcheon for a second consecutive year? Anthony Rendon of the Nationals, they're going to the playoffs. John Carlos Stanton had that gruesome injury where he was hit in the face, and that put an end to his season. Most impressive offensive numbers. I don't know. Kershaw is extremely valuable to his team. I think that's you know in a winning team. McCutcheon is too. And too bad Stanton got hurt. He could have added on. 40 home run season would have been doable for him. He's not playing anymore this year. Close. Two and one on Hosmer. He struck out swinging at a changeup in the first inning. Hosmer had a big home run last night. The White Sox at the end of four had a 3 1 lead. Royals got a run in the fifth, and then Hosmer tied it with a home run in the sixth. A rare home run allowed by. Jose Quintana. And then the Royals got three runs late. Second. Fox Sports Kansas City welcomes the St. Louis Blues to Sprint Center tomorrow as they play the Dallas Stars. Your chance to see the NHL in Kansas City. 
Blues games are on Fox Sports Kansas City all season long. You can buy tickets now to see them live at SprintCenter.com or visit STLBlues.com for Blues ticket options. I think if Denny Matthews was at home in KC, he'd go to that. I think he would. He's a hockey maniac. He's been trying to talk me into playing this winter hockey with the guys he plays with. I said, are you kidding me? I can't even walk hard, let alone escape. Oh, it's easy. Get the hell. No, thank you, man. Billy single to center first time up, driving in the third run of the first. Bearing down on him. That was a big play last night. It wasn't a 1 4 3 double play, but it sure looked like it was going to be a 6 4 3 double play. But Simeon's throw to first was short, and the Royals turned that into two runs. It was Hosmer that was sliding into Simeon. Yep, that's a little bit easier. Simeon, all he had to do was just touch that bag and throw it overhand. Ball was hit so hard. But you're right, that's a huge break last night. That opened up the floodgates. The Royals were on. Took care of business. 21st round ball double play Billy's hit into this year. Very high to right field. Very deep to right field. Is it deep enough? No. Just got under it by less than an inch. Rats. It's nonstop action. It's heart pounding excitement. Historic performances. Don't miss the 2014 postseason beginning in just four days, September 30th. And the Royals are one win away from participating in that postseason. Minnesota led 6 0 early, and now the Tigers, with two on, two out in the bottom of the fifth, have now been retired. So it's 6 3 Minnesota. Simeon takes a strike from Jeremy Guthrie. No kidding. Your wait's about over. I'm 
Simeon grounds it out to Infante. Going down to the bottom of the third. Thunder did a nice job keeping the ball down. I haven't seen anything elevated above the belt. He will throw a four seam fastball up there above the belt to get a swing and miss at times, but good. Down on the corners, trying to stay out of the middle. Using that defense. That was interesting. Squared early, thinking it was he was just doing that to bluff. He went back, stayed with him. Watch those fingers. Seven hits in the three game series. Guthrie gets a strikeout, his third. The second three pitch strikeout, two down in the third. He, he's just a, a little bit off. He's uh, He was red hot when he was. At our place last week. But he's uh, swinging out of his zone a little bit now because he's pressing. That's what happens when you haven't gotten a hit while you're being a little over aggressive, trying too hard. Alexei Ramirez is taking all the way. He fouled out to Hosmer in the first inning. To Mustakis. Guthrie has three scoreless innings. Royals got three in the first inning. Nori Aoki with a triple to score Alcides Escobar. Lorenzo Kane drove in Aoki and then Billy Butler getting Kane to the plate. And the Royals did all of that with the first five hitters of the game. And 
now strike to Salvador Perez as the Royals bat in the fourth inning. Listening to your radio show with Ned Yost before the game, isn't that what Ned said? He said, "We got to get him early. Let's get some runs in there early on the board for Guthrie." So they are doing exactly what Ned wants. After the game last night, Ned admitting to the media how excited he was to get to the ballpark, knowing that tonight or last night could have been a clinching night. The Seattle Mariners did not cooperate as they beat the Blue Jays, but there was no need for scoreboard watching tonight. Royals to get to the playoffs. All they have to do is win this game. And isn't that a bit of pressure that's relieved? I know it is up here. There's, no, there's just not that worry anymore about uh, we don't have to watch the scoreboard. All they got to do is just win. And they can do that. Very lead here. Guthrie looks like he's got his good stuff tonight. Salvi, that's the last thing he needed. There's a foul one off of his toe. He's got that shin guard on there and it protects his foot as well, but you know, there's a few spots that aren't covered, and don't you know it? The ball finds it. Canerco goes into foul ground and gets Sal. Think Paul Canerco is getting a little louder ovation tonight. Expected to play tonight, tomorrow night, and Sunday, and then he'll call it a career. Paul Canerco, number 14. And all the attention, and deservedly so, for Derek Jeter and his career. He won five World Series. High profile market. But it will be strange not to see Paul Canerco. Royals face the White Sox next year, and Canerco has some of the best num numbers ever for a player against the Royals. He has played the most games of anybody against the Royals. He has the third most home runs against the Royals and the most RBIs an opposing player against the Royals. Off the end of the bat, and Omar Infante is on with one out. Yeah, Canerco, he had 263 in his career against the Royals. 43 doubles, 45 homers, 150 ribbies, and 250 career games. That's solid. Now to Mike Moustakis. He walked on four straight pitches in the second inning. Unless he gets the high strike from Rob Drake. With one out, the defense, they, they don't play him like they do with nobody on. Pull all those guys over so there's more holes for Moose to hit. And wouldn't you know, he hits him right now. Simeon. Did he tag out Infante? No. At least according to second base umpire Ted Barrett. Now, Ted Barrett was behind Omar Infante. So that was a tough angle for him. He had to make some sort of a call. And he is one of the gentlemen in the game, Ted Barrett. And Ted Barrett. He's not going to wait for Robin Ventura to come to him. He's going to go to Ted Barrett. And I'll bet he is saying exactly that. I'll tell you what, I didn't get a great look, but I had to make a call. And this may be an umpire challenge, because I never saw Robin Ventura turn around and look back into his dugout. This may be Ted Barrett on his own. Although the rules say that that happens. Ooh, I saw contact there, but. Could have got his jersey. I don't know. But the good thing by the Aoki, excuse me, with Infante, oh yeah, looked like it might have got his jersey, but we'll see. You, you have a couple of options there. If you're the fielder coming in, you can tag the runner, or you can just try to get a double play. 
go, go to second base, or if you can get that runner to run down, you throw to first, get the guy in first, and then get him in a run down. Now, Infante, you can you can slide it in the middle of the base lines. You don't have to be near the base. You can slide and take him out, or you can run him over. Of course, the game is moving away from physical contact now, but we have seen that before. I said that Barrett was behind Infante. He was behind Simeon, but either way, Simeon was blocking his view. I'd like to get an explanation for this one because the umpire challenges are supposed to come after the seventh inning, but Ted Barrett ran to Robin Ventura. Robin Ventura never turned around and looked at his dugout to see if they wanted to challenge or not. They had a short conversation, and then Ted Barrett ran to the headsets. An end to the Royals' fourth inning. Now open at College and King in Overland Park. And by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit your MidwestFordDealers.com. Royals got all three of those runs in the first inning. Our hotel's right off of that water there. Beautiful sight right there. Good, good shot. Cutting fastball to Jose Abreu. White Sox have one hit in three innings against Guthrie, and that was Abreu's single to center in the first inning. One and one. That single gives Abreu a whopping 208 batting average against the Royals this year. Just pitched him great. In, away, and down. Out. Down in the fourth. Yeah, movement down. Change up. Good spot. Keeps it in the yard. If that ball's elevated about uh, three more inches, you know that's that's drivable pitch. And yeah, that's strong. He can hit that out. But Credit to Salvi, Dave Island, and the pitchers that have to face this guy. They, they stay on their plan. It's worked. Connor Gillespie has the hardest hit ball tonight. He lined to Keane in right center field. Lorenzo made a fine running play into the gap. Oh, 
two. I've been wanting to talk to Connor Gillespie about that base hit that he got, that triple that cleared the bases with him loaded up against Wade Davis. I got that chance today, and I asked him, and that's one of the best at bats I've seen all year off of Wade Davis, and that you turned on that fastball that was 97 on the outside part of the plate and down. How did you do that? He said, I. I'd seen a bunch of pitches in that at bat, ran the count full three two. I knew he was coming with his fastball because most pitchers are going to use their best pitch in a situation like that with him loaded. And I just put my bat out there, and, and you know I let the bat do the work, and he met it perfectly. Very polite. He thanked me for complimenting him, and then I said, "Hey, there's Paulie Canerco." I said, you know, going to college in Wichita, you get a pull for the Royals? And he said, absolutely. After we're done with it. Check swing by Canerco. Didn't mean to do it. And Guthrie gets in. Canerco is 0 for 2. Guthrie has retired seven in a row. He has four scoreless innings. And the Royals. Are closer. Detroit, they had cut the lead to 6 3, but they have fallen on some tough times again. The Twins add a couple of runs to make it 8 to 3. You see the other scores, including the A's now ahead of Texas in that game. Our Mazda game break Brian Dozier had the first RBI of the game, and he has the most recent. This against Jim Johnson. And the run scores Eduardo Escobar. So the score right now, 8 to 3 in the sixth inning. Guys, it's been a lot of fun to look at some of the players and where they might have been when the Royals were last in the playoffs. Well, 21 players on this roster were not even born yet. Wade Davis was not even two months old when the Royals won the World Series. Greg Holland was still about a month from being born. But there was one guy that might at least remember it a little bit, and that would be Raul Ibanez. You see the young bullpen out there, and a guy like Brandon Finnegan, yeah, no way he remembers that. But Raul Ibanez was 13 years old when the Royals won the World Series. What was he doing at that point? He said he was in seventh grade and he had just switched from the baseball season to the football season in Miami. He said he was a defensive end and center, an undersized one, on the seventh through ninth grade football team, led the team in sacks. Pinerco still has the soft hands as he pulls it out of the dirt. Escobar is out. Hard to imagine. Raul is such a soft spoken, easy going guy, but apparently he was a, a fierce defensive player in football. Jorge 
Suzuki has an RBI triple and a run scored. He's also lined out to left. It was right here in Chicago. Raul Abanez and some other veterans initiated that team meeting. Those came out of the All Star break. They were swept by the Red Sox in Boston. They came to Chicago and were beaten by Chris Sale. And that's when Labanez gathered the players inside the training room at U.S. Cellular Field. And a, a productive meeting, a heart to heart. The veterans were able to express to the younger Royals how much they respected them, how much the league respects them, and they just needed to start respecting themselves and seeing themselves. The way the league saw them. And that great August actually had roots in July. Going back to right after that meeting here in Chicago. And to my knowledge, I think that's the only player's only meeting they've had now. They, they, they probably had a few others. We don't know that for sure, but that's the one that was publicized and it got out. Accomplish a lot in those meetings. You don't want a lot of them. If you have a lot of meetings in a season like that, players only means you're in trouble. You're having some difficulties winning games. But to their credit, they never quit. Ned Yost deserves a lot of credit for that too. Keeping his guys believing, he stayed positive during some of those rough valleys they were in early this season. I mean, there were some deep valleys. It wasn't looking good if they were going to even come out of it. Dugout. That's an ugly fight. I think when Nori's up, everyone needs to pay attention in both dugouts and in the crowd. <laughs> And the infielders better be on their toes. As Ramirez is. And there are two down. Well, one of the younger players that has turned his season around has been Lorenzo Cain, especially as Ned Yost talks about in this important month of September. What I see is Lorenzo Cain locked in. Uh, I mean, he is locked into every pitch um, that's thrown offensively, defensively. Um, he's just locked in. I mean, he's focused. Um, uh, last night, I mean, you, you watch his at bats, and he was on absolutely everything. Okay, locked in. Another baseball term that you hear in baseball a lot. The guy's hot. You know, there's a lot of different terms they use when you're hot. When you're locked in, He's just seeing that ball well and hitting most of his balls up the middle with the biggest hole of the diamond. He deserves a lot of credit for staying on the ball, shortening up his swing, and, and being aggressive and waiting for his pitch to hit. Out in the shallow center field, Adam Eaton is there to make the play. And Oasi is starting to put it together after the Royals got three in the first inning. Three nothing KC to the bottom of the fifth.
shows us what's cooking. Gonna let it cook a little longer. And we'll be cooking some Boulevard brats from farmland. Have your beer and eat it too. Danny Duffy and John Danks, who the Royals have never beaten, 6 and 0 against KC. So that is tomorrow, an hour earlier. 5:30 with Jaime Royals live, and the first pitch at 6:10. Look at the season numbers for Duffy. Those, see, those numbers are impressive. Danny Duffy, when they left spring training, he was left back. They weren't sure what, what they were going to do with him. Ventura had beat Duffy out for, the, for that fifth spot in the rotation. And then I, I believe it was an injury that Duffy got called up. Wasn't it? Bruce Chen. Yeah, Bruce got hurt. And then Danny came up and they used him out of the bullpen. And he found it. He found it in the pit. Four strikeouts. For Jeremy Guthrie, and now he's retired eight in a row. Michael Taylor walked in the second inning. That's Guthrie's only walk. Yeah, he jammed him, but Taylor hit in a good spot. He threw a hole on the right side, and he's on with one out. And that is the White Sox' second hit tonight, and only their third base runner. <laughs> Taylor, good inside-out swing. This young man here, he's he's hoping and praying that he can impress enough that he can find a job. With the White Sox, a regular job. Adrian Niedo get out to Infante in the second inning. Seven pitches, six strikes for Guthrie in this inning. Ahead, one ball, two strikes. Guthrie has induced 21 ground ball double plays this year. That ties a career high for him in the season. He rolls one more. He'll set a new mark for that. He's done a great job. We showed you since the second half of the season. Limiting the long ball, pitching to contact, keeping his team in games. Nice to know Guthrie's signed for another year. He's as good as any fifth, fifth guy in the rotation in the league, I think. Never been to the postseason before, Jeremy Guthrie. And with the expanded rosters, the Royals have 35 eligible in uniform. And only five of the 35 have played in a postseason game. So the biggest story, of course, is about the Royals. It's about Kansas City getting back to the postseason, but we also have some veterans on this roster. And some careers are entering the twilight phase. Guthrie may not be one of those, but. Jason Frazier, Scott Downs, Josh Willingham. Guy's been around for a long, long time. Never been to the postseason. Oh, yeah. Caught 
the inside part with a great two seam fastball. Then the Ato, you got to go. Great spot. That ball starts out five inches off the inside part of the plate. Hitter gives up on it. But that movement, look at that two seam movement on that baseball, catches the corner. Good call, Rob Drake. Simeon with a man on two down. But look at his location. Just the spots he's putting that ball. Everything revolves around fastball command for Guthrie. Two seamers really working nice. Talk about how he's been able to command the ball down like that. Great spot to miss if you're missing. They can solve his job easy back there. Two and one on Simeon. Salvador is so quick with the way he turns his glove. He's got really soft hands. Watch him quickly. The, that ball's on the way. Look at how quickly he adjusts. He immediately turns his thumbs on his glove out to keeps it in front of him. Oh. Touch it with his bare hand and flipped the second, hoping that Taylor had rounded the bag. Yeah, that hurt. He's good. I'm good. I'm good. Well, um, that's not going to keep it from coming out because, you know, had he not touched that ball, Escobar had that. The inning was over. Three action thing. Hit the, looked like it hit the palm of his hand. He's lucky he didn't get his fingers, but it looked like it hit the palm. Tonight, the White Sox have had more than one runner against Guthrie. Eaton's, Eaton's their best hitter with runners in scoring position, too. The times last night. Situations with runners in scoring position. And both times he struck out. And there are the numbers. I think Michael Brantley has a higher batting average in the American League with runners at second and/or third. And once again, a Royals pitcher gets eaten with a runner in scoring position. Four innings to go. Guthrie has five scoreless innings, and the Royals lead three nothing. Done, Jay Guts.
Cosmer with this home run in the sixth inning not only tied the game. But it was a sonic slam home run that was worth seventy four hundred dollars to David Taylor from Belton. Yeah. And now Hosmer leads off the sonic slam inning tonight. Our contestant is Mira Winans from Kansas City Missouri if the Royals hit a home run in the city Mira. Because of last night, the pot goes from $7,400 to $100. But if the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park, Mira, you'll win $25 grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. Tonight, Hosmer has walked and struck out against Noesi, who has settled down after giving up. Two runs to the first three batters and three runs to the first five batters tonight. And since the first inning, the Royals have only two hits. Two and two. Side part of the plate. That's been his pitch tonight. He's not throwing him for strikes. He's throwing him down. The world's been swinging at a few. Billy drove in a run with a single to center in the first inning. He's also grounded into a double play. And he goes and chases a fastball up. Last home run for Billy, August 24th. He's overdue. Oh, and two. Stayed up and Eaton back to the warning track to make the play. The Royals, Fox Sports, and the state of Missouri are teaming up to help you stop smoking. And for more information, call the quit line at 1 800 quit now. Ball one, he is flied to deep right field and struck out. Seven seasons ago, Alex Gordon and Billy Butler first got to the Royals after Alex made the team on opening day. Billy came later in the year. So those two have been with the Royals the longest. Balls in one strike. Talking about some of the veterans who've been around for a long time have never been to the postseason. The first wave, the first core of young players built to get the Royals to the next level. With Billy Butler and Alex Gordon. Two and two. Idea was it to move Alex from third base to left? Field? There you go. He did. There's a 
He's pretty good move. Six strikeouts for Noesi. Guthrie back to the mound with a three run lead in the bottom of the sixth. Dodge.com or your local Dodge dealer today. Our sprint question of the night 72% believe that Clayton Kershaw should not only win the Cy Young but the MVP. Coming the first National Leaguer if that came to fruition since 1968. First pitcher to win National League MVP, and that was Bob Gibson. And his season was so dominating, they altered the height of the pitcher's mound. You know, you impacted baseball if they make a rule, especially after your season, that you dominated. That's that's pretty impressive. He's not a, a, a boasting man whatsoever, but you know, he's got to be proud of that. And had a 1.12 ERA, and it wasn't just him. The scoring was way down all throughout baseball, but Gibson certainly was the headlining performance. Kane makes a play in center field on Alexei Ramirez. Of course, Justin Verlander, three years ago, was both Cy Young winner and MVP. And prior to him, Dennis Eckersley in the early 1990s did the same for the Oakland A's. Jose Abreu is single to center and fly to center. By the way, has passed 200 innings pitch tonight and accomplishes that for the fifth time in the last six years. He needed just four and a third. He has gone five and a third. Blows it right by Abreu. One ball, two strikes. And he can credit that to his tremendous workout ability, his work ethic. It's, it's off the charts. This guy really does work hard. He stays in shape. He's Works hard in between starts. You know, those are all stuff that we never, we don't see. Of course, the fans don't, but 
like we do when we're coming to the ballpark and watch these guys go. The only season in the last six where Guthrie did not get to 200 innings was his first year with the Royals, 2012. And for a time, well, first of all, Guthrie did not pitch well with the Rockies, but for a time they were experimenting with a six man rotation. So that cut down everybody's innings. And Guthrie still got over 180 that year, but not 200. And he's achieved that milestone again this year. Changeup. His stuff is just great. Two seam fastball is Maddox like. He is dotting corners. He's keeping the ball down. Everything's working for Guthrie tonight. So we got tipped with a backswing. It's all right. Gillespie with two outs. And he hits it hard into right center field again, and Lorenzo Kane is there again. Three innings to go. The Royals lead 3 0. Royals playoffs, every college football game, all concerts, and even has deals on the, Ch on the Chiefs Monday night game versus the Patriots. Tickets for Less has an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating and never charges any hidden service fees. Buy all your tickets securely online at ticketsforless.com. An exciting time for Royals fans here in Kansas City, around the country, and around the world. And the greatest Royal of all time, George Brett, is here. He was... Looking back on 1985, stories that he's told before, but always fun to hear. And he said that he could not sleep after game six. He didn't know if he was so nervous for game seven or just amped up. Couldn't fall asleep till really late. And the only way to ease his mind the next day of game seven was to go to the Chiefs game in the afternoon. And then you see him out there celebrating with Brett Saberhagen. He said that he, late in that game, 11 nothing, went up to Saberhagen. In sort of a pre Hoosier speech, remember Gene Hackman saying to Ollie, when he makes the free throws, we get back and play defense. Well, he went up and said, when you get the final out to the young Brett Saberhagen, I'm the one that gets out there to greet you first. Don't go running all over the place because I was here for the playoff losses in the 70s and 1980 and 1984. So, sure enough, it was George Brett that was out there for the first greeting. It's interesting, Joel, in 
In the years I've been here, whether I was talking to Denny Matthews, Fred White, George Brett, Frank White, Willie Wilson, you name it. The fact that they were going to win game seven was a foregone conclusion. Everyone says we knew we were going to win that game. Of course, game six was so emotional with the Todd Worrell play over at first base and that dramatic turn of events as Perez strikes out. And then it got very emotional in game seven. Remember, Joaquin Anuhar was ejected. And the Royals won in blowout fashion, but maybe George was nervous at the time when he woke up the next morning. But almost to a man, there was no doubt, and it wasn't some sort of false bravado. There was no doubt in their minds that they were going to win that game, and it wasn't even a game. It's the kind of confidence that you want to have, and I, I believe the Royals feel that way now. 2014 Royals. Department. Kurt Nelson in the middle, the director of the Royals Hall of Fame. A smile on his and face. KC is here in uniform. <laughs> Those guys are happy and ready. And we hear he has brought the W with him. I don't know where he's going to hang it if the Royals win tonight, but he's got it. Great to see him here. Nelson, he's had a smile the whole game. Jack Monahan sitting in front of Casey. Royals <laughs> baseball <laughs> operations department. Uh, it's wonderful. Thoughtful gesture by Royals general manager Dayton Moore to invite so many people to be here to experience a celebration if it happens. And of course, Mr. David Glass, Royals president Dan Glass, signing off on it. Hoffman Stadium and the baseball operations department, I imagine, was rather empty today because they're all here. I'm sure that everyone experiences the celebration on the field in the clubhouse. Hopefully, with many of the fans who have gathered here tonight. Yeah, it's a great gesture by ownership. And talking with Dayton before the game today, he said he's most proud of the commitment that ownership has made to him and his hired people and bringing. Happiness to the Royals fans with a winning team. I first got here three years ago and was using that word patience. People let me know quickly we don't want to hear that word patience here. We've been waiting a long time. But when you grow up, Homegrown team with a lot of the draft picks that they've that he's had over the years. It takes time. Wow. Plato, who was with the Royals in spring training this year, comes out of the pen and strikes out the side. Casey's got the W here in Chicago. The <laughs> biggest W in the last 29 years.
runs in the first inning. And now an upgrade on defense as Gerard Basin is in center field. Lorenzo Keen slides over to right. Jeremy Guthrie has pitched six scoreless innings and he hasn't made 80 pitches yet. And a big ovation for Paul Canerco. He's the first man that Guthrie will face in the bottom of the seventh. Good hard slider 0 1. Canerco has struck out and grounded back to Guthrie. Should mention is Canerco has five home runs this year and he's batting 215. He is playing now with a broken left hand, small fracture in his left hand, so he is really grinding it out to finish off his big league career. And tomorrow will be Paul Canerco Day. It's been a season. Especially lately, in tribute to Canerico in his long career, but tomorrow is the official celebration of his long big league career. Two and two. Wonder if Polly will get a statue. He should. Yep. He is the second most. Runs and second most RBIs in White Sox history. And the count goes from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. Said, I gave you a cookie. All one two. Jordan Danks, he has struck out twice. Guthrie has six strikeouts and six in the third innings. And Guthrie will have games where he'll. Have a high number of strikeouts. He is not a strikeout pitcher by trade, but don't tell the White Sox that he's striking out better than one per inning this year in Chicago. While we were talking about Guthrie coming over, Ooh. Guthrie coming over here in a trade with the Rockies. Dave Island, the pitching coach, he had watched him pitch in his days with Baltimore when Dave Island was a New York Yankees pitching coach, and he said, hey, "I can help him." So he got him to get a little bit more of a hip turn. Okay, his hips, he said, I, he can get more movement with his hips. He could just turn his lower half and he can get a little more action coming out of it. He could be more effective. And that's helped him with his two seam fastball. It's given him a little bit more movement. So Dave Island has done a, a lot for Guthrie in his three years here. And he's done a lot for the Royals. All those losing years, and not just barely below 500, but the 90, 100 loss seasons, there was one thing in common every year, and that was the Royals were at or near the bottom in the major pitching categories. Runs allowed, home runs allowed. And Dave Island arrived on the scene in 2012. And in his first year as Royals pitching coach, the Royals were 10th in the league in ERA. 
in his second year, the Royals were first in the league in ERA, moving up nine spots in just one year. The Royals are fourth in the league in ERA going into tonight, but essentially the same ERA that they had last year. And I think most people believe that while 2013 wasn't a fluke on the mound, that the Royals wouldn't be able to duplicate what they did last year. And while they don't rank as highly as they did last year, they basically have pitched the same. He deserves a ton of credit. Getting some bullpen help up out there in that pit. See if they can get a few guys going. Two and two on Michael Taylor. He is one of the four White Sox hits tonight. And he has the only walk allowed by Guthrie. The ground to Moustakis out at second and no double play. Taylor runs well for a big man. I believe that. Six foot six, 255. If he was a baseball player, I know a lot of football scouts that would drool over him with his size and his speed. That's a two hopper firm. Infante came across the bag. I haven't seen him do that very often. That's what you want to do from third base. It cuts down the time. Two down to the rookie Adrian Nieto. He is 0 for 2. And move his feet and then some. Haven't been able to build any momentum against Jeremy Guthrie tonight. And they've had the leadoff man on zero times. And they've only had one inning with more than one base runner. And it out to Infante. Two innings to go. Seven scoreless innings for Jeremy Guthrie, and the Royals lead 3 0. as Panera takes us around the league twins continuing to pile on the Tigers Blue Jays doubled up the Orioles today A's ahead of the Rangers six to two Angels and Mariners coming up later tonight the only other score guys that is not on there would involve the Cleveland Indians and I bring it up for this reason we saw what Felix Hernandez did in his start the other day eight earned runs Corey Kluber tonight Eight innings, five hits, no runs, two walks, 11 strikeouts.
He finishes the year at 18 and 9 with a 2.44 ERA. That may be your American League Cy Young Award winner. Wow. Sure happened fast for him, didn't it? You got to believe it. Unbelievable. We, we, we were calling him an ace right after the All Star break. He was showing that kind of form. Good luck to him. Chevy called to the bullpen. It's Matt Lindstrom getting the Royals top of the order. Royals have a 3 0 lead, and they got all three runs, five batters into the game. And then Hector Noesi steadied himself. Noesi retired 10 of the last 11. Michael Plato struck out the side, coming on for the top of the seventh inning, and now Lindstrom. Four hard fastballs here from Lindstrom, too. It's mid 90s. He'll reach slider change. Over from right field to make the play on Escobar. He's two for four. Matt Lindstrom earlier in the year pitching to Alcides Escobar was fielding a bunt in front of the mound and wrecked his ankle. He had to have surgery and that wiped out most of his year. But he's back. To get himself ready for next season. And here's Dyson hitting for the first time. Cross the knees for a strike. One hop to Canerco. We'll circle back to the bag. Two down. As we promised earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Sent in by the Super Paul, who is down on the field for a Royals game. And by using hashtag KC fan photo, you can have yours shown during an upcoming game broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Straight games after he drove in a run in the first inning. He stole a base, his 28th, and he scored one of the three first inning runs. Lindstrom wants a new ball. When Lorenzo was growing up in Florida, his favorite player. Was Tory Hunter. And Lorenzo has a lot of the same physical abilities as Tory Hunter. And now we're starting to see some of his leadership abilities. I think that's a needed commodity for that clubhouse for a guy like Lorenzo. He's he's established himself as an everyday player. You have numbers. You can, you're, you're driving the bus. That gives you the keys. And you, you can lead. Hard hit ball. To the bottom of the eighth inning. It's still three nothing KC. And the gate is open for Wade Davis.
emotional hug from Ned Yost, and now he goes from pitcher to cheerleader as the Royals are an inning and a half away from heading back to the playoffs. And Jeremy Guthrie is our Ram drive of the game. Watch where all these pitches are. All of them tonight have been down in the zone. This is what you dream pitchers would do for you. And Guthrie got it done with his defense and his command. Great job. And now Wade Davis with a 3 0 lead in the bottom of the eighth. The 9 1 and 2 hitters are coming up. And Wade Davis was typical Wade Davis last night. Coming on in the Bottom of the eighth inning with a two run lead. And Davis struck out two more. 106 strikeouts for Davis. That is a Royals record for a relief pitcher. Greg Holland set the record last year, or tied the record last year with Jim York. There's Monty. A couple of 94 strikeout seasons. Jim York, by the way, when he struck out 103 back in 71, that was in over 100 innings pitched. Holland did it last year in 67 innings pitched. So the number counts the same, but Holland got there a lot quicker, and now Wade Davis setting the new record with 106, and he's done that in just 71 innings. Well, that talks about the quality of pitches and the stuff that they have. Wade Davis, mid to upper 90s with that fastball, cuts it. He's got a curveball. Cutters 93 to 95. That's banking out of play. Strikeouts for Wade Davis. Got the bottom half of the zone. You got to go. Strike. 0 for 3 tonight and 1 for 8 in the series. For wearing out the Royals in the last homestand. Wide open right center field. The Royals are not defending that part of the field, and Adam Eaton is going to end up with a triple, and he does so standing up. It's the first time all night the White Sox have had a runner past second base. Curveball. Put it down low. That's just a good stroke. Good piece of hit there. He drove it where they weren't. Dyson was playing him to the opposite field, left center, and he pulled. Watch him. He's off to the races. Puts the inside part of the base, cuts a nice angle. Tenth trip. That ties him for the league lead.
Jose Ramirez 0 for 3 against Jeremy Guthrie. That triple by Eaton was only the fifth extra base hit all year against Wade Davis. Fastball, but didn't quite square it up at 98 miles an hour. 0 and 2. That's why Ramirez is smiling. In his mind, he just got a hit by making contact with Wade Davis. <laughs> he did. Now, let's see how he handles that breaking ball. It's 98 right over the middle of the plate. Get away with that when you throw that hard. About this last night, and it was the bottom of the ninth inning. One on, Ramirez at the plate, Abreu on deck in a three run game. And Abreu never got to the plate representing the time run, so this is another big out for the Royals to get Ramirez, who grounds it into left field for a base hit. Chicago is on the board. It is 3 1, and Abreu will come up. Representing the time run. Both hits in this inning have come on his curveball. Maybe just stay with that fastball. Don't look like they're trying, to, they're getting that, they're behind it. So another curveball, sometimes that speeds the bat up and you can guide it in there. Abreu is one for three tonight with a single. That fastball is a little bit high. Ball one. That's a good hit pitch right there. It may not have been called a strike, but man, that's over the middle of the plate, just below the belt. Good thing he didn't swing at that. Big fella here. Right there. He does hit it, it's going to be on the ground somewhere, and Davis wouldn't mind rolling up a double play. Davis has induced three ground ball double plays this year. He can do it again on pitches like that. And you're, and you're getting guys behind the baseball like that. You don't want to throw that curveball again. Both, both hits this inning have been on the curves. Against the Royals. Perfect pitch. Great spot. Keeping it out to the middle of the plate. And tricking it. Great. Strong. A lot behind that fastball at 98. Then he just finishes him off that late cutter. That cutter, it's a it's really tough for a hitter to track that. Darts away from the right-handed batter at the last minute. You see it, then you see it break. It almost Tell yourself I'm not going to hit that one when you're swinging at it. Well, that's 
speed. We were talking about him earlier in his matchup with Wade Davis during the last homestand. It was Gillespie who put an end to Davis's long scoreless streak and Herrera's long scoreless streak with that triple, and he is three out of eight against Davis. Struck Gillespie out last night. He could do it again, but he's got to get in there here. Rewarding for him personally. Last year he had a daughter and he lost a brother. Stepbrother Dustin died suddenly at age 25. And to honor him, after Chris Getz left the Royals, Davis took on number 17. That was Dustin's number when he played baseball. And Wade Davis. Last year, going from a starting pitcher, trying to find his footing with a brand new organization, looking to transition to the bullpen at the end of the year, and who knew that Lou Kochaver's elbow would give out in spring training this year? And Wade Davis will become one of the best relievers in the game. And if you go by the numbers, maybe the best. And the roar of the crowd of the Royals fans. Yes. One inning to go. The Royals lead by two at the end of eight. Waiter, check please. To you by Academy Sports and Outdoors.
Tonight's copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Corporation. Ryan LeFever, Rex Hudler with Joel Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery, and Josh Vernier will be joining us post game. With director Steve Kurtenbach, producer Joe Lavero, associate producers Al Broughton, Sam Abramson, Dave Holtzman. The producer of Royals Live is Brian Shapiro. And quite a few Royals fans who can't wait to watch a celebration if it happens tonight. Right here on the south side of Chicago. Yep, great teammates on the field watching the Kansas City Royals baseball team, and we got a great team up here in our production area. Thank you guys. For all you do. This is Eric Surkamp on for the ninth inning to get Hosmer, Butler, and Gordon. Fastball slider. Grimace is saying, mm, that's, that's pretty nasty. That's a big new slider from a lefty. Goes the other way. And it's going to be caught by Taylor. So Hosmer 0 for 3 with a walk. And there's one down in the ninth. One of the three runs in the first inning. It's all the offense for the Royals. Three runs in the first, and Chicago just got its first run in the bottom of the eighth. Been a Billy Butler type of season, but where would the Royals be right now if not for Billy Butler's surge offensively and his play defensively when Eric Hosmer went down with a broken hand? And he gets a base hit into left field, a two hit game for Billy Butler. Gore will run for him and Billy gets a nice ovation as he heads back to the first base dugout. They gathered Royals fans all on the first base side. Excitement's mounting. See what kind of jump Terrence Gore can get at first base when he goes. Last night we saw him and he slid late. I mean, right on the base, popped right up on top of it, didn't overslide. You know, you, you don't need that big a lead when you have the, that kind of speed. Just get a good, you know, good lead where you can get back and step in a dive. And that's all you need, especially if you can get a good jump. <laughs> now, Sir Camp may have made the mistake there of being too quick to the plate on the pitch, on the pitch out to Nieto. You want the runner to go. 
don't want the runner to freeze when you're going to the plate. And Gore picked that up and he decided to stay put. Now Gore runs. He got a great jump. And Ramirez, like in a game of high line, flung the ball over the left side of the infield, and Gillespie, the third baseman, was heads up. So no further advance for Terrence Gore. Who steals a base for a second straight night after running for Billy Butler. Fifth back on the year for him. Cat quick on that takeoff. No chance. Slider to Alex. Think about what Alex Gordon has gone through since becoming a Royal. Getting a standing ovation at Poppin Stadium before he even got to the batter's box for the first time on opening day back in 2007. Gillespie goes into foul ground and he'll make the play. Not living up to expectations, and they were very lofty expectations. It was George Brett, remember, saying, I sure wish I had the ability of Alex Gordon. But he humbled himself. He went back to the minor leagues. He learned a new position. He has won three gold gloves. He's been to two All Star games. And depending on what statistics you subscribe to, has developed into one of the most valuable players in the game. Another three run lead, if not more, as Greg Holland gets ready for an important bottom of the ninth inning. And he'll be facing Daniel Webb, who is the fifth White Sox pitcher. Perez has Terrence Gore at second base with two down.
seven over the inside to Sal. He was 0 for 3 tonight. He had a two hit game last night. A slider to curveball to go with him. Take much to get Gore home. You just find a hole out there, he'll score. Sal is down on strikes. So Gore left at second base. And Greg Holland comes through the gate for the most important save of his major league career. Live with the win and extended version of the post game show with live interviews throughout from the clubhouse and a huge ovation here right now for two reasons White Sox fans happy because Paul Kinnert goes up Royals fans are standing because they're three outs away from history down here in the camera well lots of rain gear there is no bad weather in the forecast they are ready to go into that clubhouse and cover a champagne celebration and over my head here that chant that we hear so often at Kauffman Stadium, let's go Royals, drowning out the rest of the fans, cheering for the legend here, Paul Canerco. Guys? All right, Joel, as Canerco takes a strike from Greg Holland. Greg Holland from Little Marion, North Carolina, population 8,000. I think it's appropriate that he's on the mound right now, not just because he's the Royals' closer, but because he was the first Dayton Moore draft pick to get to the big leagues. No balls and two strikes. He was a 10th round pick in 2007 out of Western Carolina University in North Carolina. All star closer Greg Holland is three outs away from. Sending the Royals to the postseason. Two strikes. 
some respectable numbers off the of Holland. Finish him off. Slide. And a play. Stayed with the fastball. Now maybe he comes back with a slide. Just missed getting into that one. Getting hit a ball in the yard. But Alex had him play just the way he wanted. Tonight is the same for every Royal player, every Royal coach, and manager Ned Yost, but there are so many different individual stories and different individual emotions stirring inside of the Royals. I can't help but think about what Ned Yost is thinking. After six years helping turn the Milwaukee Brewers around. Right on the edge of the playoffs, was let go only to watch Dale Swain, who's his hitting coach now, lead the Brewers into the playoffs and into the National League Championship Series. One ball and two strikes. Thanks. And talking about how, as manager of the Brewers, he felt like he always needed to do something, and his emotions got the best of him at the very end with Milwaukee. And has been the steady, calm influence through this roller coaster the last two years. And now, Ned Yost and the Royals are one out away from heading back to the postseason. Taylor. Popped up. Salvador Perez. What a team. What a season. What a relief. The Kansas City Royals are off the hook and headed back to the postseason. It is not only a KCW, it is a KC celebration. Congratulations, everyone. Jumping on the dog pile. Well, the Royals made sure that he was here tonight. The wait is over. That's it. And that gentleman there doesn't have to. Tell his little girl what it was like to see the Royals celebrate going to the postseason. She got to see it in person. There's the Royals front office. All the hard work since Dayton Moore took over in the middle of the 2006 season. 
All the ups and downs. An endless roller coaster ride has come to a close here in Chicago as the Royals, at the very minimum, will be a wild card representative in the American League. There's the KCW. Tonight, pitching, defense, excellent starting pitching, the bullpen finishing the game off, and just enough offense. The Royals got all three runs in the first inning, just five hitters into the game, and that's all they needed for Ned Yost and the 2014 Royals to head back to the playoffs. Hopefully, this is the first of three more celebrations. Yeah, baby. One more, baby. One more, baby. Yeah. Here, Hosmer saying a lot more. Deborah, she lived through that last season.